Are you wanting to hear from God more? Do you feel like you don't hear from God enough? Or do you ever question, why don't I hear God clearly? I hear all these men of God, these women of God, those who serve God. I hear them say how God gave them this word, how God spoke to them last night, and I'm just not hearing him. And before, if you remember, I had a sermon. I actually had a message. It was called Protect your gates. Now, in Protect Your Gates, I talked about watching what, you know, paying close attention to what you watch, allowing what you allow your eyes to see, paying close attention to what you allow your ears to listen to, what, what comes out of your mouth. I was really stressing about protecting your gates because, guys, portals are real, and so many people open up portals that should never be open, that actually may drown out your ability to hear God it actually may mess with your hearing because if what you're allowing to go into your ears does not align with God's word, it does not align with his ways, then Satan will continue to play with your mind. He will continue to play with, play with how you're thinking and what you're seeing and just the way in which you go about things. And it's important that we pay close attention to what's playing in our ears. To what's going on in our ears. So today, the title of this message is Most Deaf. Because many people who want to hear God have a hard time hearing him because they're deafening their ears by the music that they listen to. It's by the music that they listen to. A lot of the music that goes on today, a lot of the music that is being played today, it is unholy, it is ungodly, it does not please him. A lot of these festivals and concerts that go on are not pleasing to God. So before we go into this message, let's go ahead and pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. So most deaf, most deaf. The title of this message is most deaf. I want to start off with the first scripture here. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 5. And it says, it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. Better to hear the hear the rebuke of of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. So many people avoid listening to the truth. So many people avoid hearing rebukes as this message may come off as a rebuke, a gentle and patient one, but it may come off as a rebuke. So many people will be offended. So many people will say, ah, oh, Cameron, I can listen to whatever I want. Ah, oh, Cameron, it doesn't matter what I'm playing. It has no effect on my Holy Spirit. My spirit can handle it. It has no effect on how I think. But the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of, a lot of songs that you're listening to are songs of fools. They're songs of men and women who don't believe in God, who don't believe that Jesus died for our sins, who don't believe that Jesus resurrected three days later, who don't believe that God is the one and only true God and that Jesus is the only way to the Father. Some of them don't even believe that God exists. Many of the songs that they write, the videos that they make, it's actually a mockery of God. But more people are going to listen to those worldly songs, to secular music, than they would to these words of rebuke coming from my mouth today. Because they want to sing foolish things. They want to hear foolish things. They want to act foolishly and dance foolishly. But when there's a rebuke coming their way, when a man of God is trying to tell them how to live that the music they're listening to is not pleasing to God, they'll find every reason and every excuse as to why they can move on with listening to the very music that is playing in their ears. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you rich, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts, to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, 
followers of Jesus worship with other believers. I want to repeat that again. Followers of Jesus worship with other believers. They don't sing foolishly with the world. So they're not in concert singing all of these songs that are worshiping Satan, that are praising Satan. They're not in concert singing F the world, F the world, throw your middle fingers up. How was that pleasing to God? How was that honoring God? He raised you. He created you to be better than that. So many Christians, they want to, so many followers of Jesus. They call themselves Christians, but they want to partake in these festivals of the world. They want to partake in these concerts that are not cool. And I don't care how much money you pay for them. I don't care how much you, how long you've been waiting to go to this concert. If the music that they're singing there, if it doesn't praise Jesus, if it doesn't worship Jesus, then who is it worshiping? Who is it praising? We have to ask ourselves, is this music that I'm, that are these lyrics that are coming off of my tongue? Are the lyrics that I'm hearing, the music that I'm hearing that's going into my ears, is it pleasing to God? Is this truly worshiping with other believers or are you just now mingling with the world? Doing as the world does, singing as the world sings, acting as the world acts. Teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms. The, the word admonish here means to warn. It's a rebuke. So when the word of Christ, when it dwells richly in you in wisdom, when you have the word of Christ in you, you start to gain wisdom as a result. He will give you, you know, believers, we're to teach and admonish one another. What does it mean? We're supposed to warn one another. So I'm warning you all today, each and every person who is listening to this video, each and every person who are hearing the words come off of my tongue, I'm warning you today. I want you to take a close look at the music you're listening to, at the lyrics that are coming off of some of these artists' tongue. They put a nice beat behind it. They put a fancy beat behind it. They put a catchy beat behind it. So I want to warn you today to maybe drown out the beat. Maybe go on Google and just look up the lyrics to the song and what are they saying? Are they making something evil sound catchy with an 808 behind them? Are they making a phrase that is very well evil sound catchy with a nice beat? I want to warn you to pay very close attention. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 says, preach the word of God. Be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. So I'm going to patiently correct and rebuke you all and encourage you to live better today. Because we are in the last days. We are in the end times. We are in a time, ladies and gentlemen, where we should not be playing around. Where we should not be messing around. So I'm going to patiently deliver this word today. I'm going to patiently encourage you to let go of the secular music, to let go of the songs that are not pleasing to God, that do not praise Yahweh. Whether the time is favorable or not, I understand that it is now May at the time of me recording this video, it is May, April actually, forgive me, it's actually April. And we're entering the season into which many people are going to start going to concerts. Many people are going to start going to these festivals. And they may say, oh, this is the time I don't want to hear this message. This is the time that I really don't want to hear what this man has to say about the songs or the concerts or the festivals that I go to. But whether the time is favorable or not, I'm going to deliver this word. I'm going to give you this word. And my prayer is that the Holy Spirit convicts you. The Holy Spirit transform, does a transformation in your heart so that you begin to sing songs, you begin to praise, you begin to sing hymns that are pleasing to God. 
The scripture also said singing with grace. If we're going back to Colossians 3.16, it said singing with grace in your hearts. Did you know that the biblical meaning of singing is to the praise of anyone? To the praise of anyone. What you sing reflects who you praise. So many people don't like when I say that. But when you look at the biblical meaning of singing, it means to the praise of anyone. So when you're singing songs of specific artists, whether they're R&B, whether they're rap, whether it's country, it can be pop music. You're singing to the praise of the one who is of that song, is of that music. Now, some may say, well, Cameron, what about gospel music? Just because I sing gospel music, since it's to the praise of anyone, does that mean that if I'm singing, if I'm repeating the lyrics of a gospel artist, that I'm praising the gospel artist? No, because I'm looking at it from a spiritual perspective here now. The lyrics of secular music, and it doesn't mean that every gospel song really is of God. We're just going to be honest here today. That's why I'm saying pay close attention to the lyrics that you're singing. Do they align with the word of God? Do they align with what God says? What you sing reflects who you praise. It reflects what's in your heart. Remember, remember Jesus said, it's not what goes in, but it's what comes out. What you sing reflects who you praise. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. You either praise Satan or you either praise God. There's no in between. You either praise the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of heaven. You praise Jesus or you praise Satan. There is no in between. So what music are you listening to? Let's go to Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 2. And so dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The kind he will find acceptable is the music you listen to. The concerts or the, the festivals that you attend, are they pleasing to God? Would he find those events acceptable? Are these events where people are throwing up the middle finger? Are these events where people are twerking and, and grinding? Are these events where people are doing, are participating in paganistic things? Are there evil sacrifices going on at this event? What are going on at these events? What music is being played? What is the artist on the stage saying? Is God pleased? Would he find it acceptable? With the concert or the festival that you go to. Would he find it acceptable? With the things that the crowd is shouting what or who are they calling on? What are they saying? What does the atmosphere feel like? Is it holy or is it evil? Is it holy or is it evil? Would God find it pleasing or acceptable? See, secular music or any song that doesn't glorify God, it has no substance. It carries no nutrients for our soul and spirit. Secular music, secular songs, they have no substance. They carry no nutrients because it's all about self. It's all about what I want to do. It's about your flesh. It's about how you feel. It's about your feelings. It's not about God's word. It's not about being obedient. It's not about living holy. Secular music encourage you, encourages you to actually live worldly to live as the world does, to speak as the world speaks. There's no substance, no nutrients that secu secular music brings to our soul, that secular music brings to our spirit. So I ask again, and I'm going to ask multiple times through this video, is the music that you listen to, the music, the words, the lyrics that you recite, would God find those things acceptable? Because many of us believe 
You know, what I say is how I think. If I repeat something so much, I will eventually believe it. Well, I want you to think about your favorite song and I want you to look up the lyrics to your favorite song. And if you were to recite those lyrics hundreds of times, how would you begin to think? What would you be meditating on? Would you be meditating on the word of God and how to live for him and how to please him? Or are you meditating now on how this artist feels, how this artist says to live? I want you to think about that. So what takes place at these festivals? What takes place at these concerts? What does it look like? Cameron, were there any concerts in the Bible? Were there any festivals in the Bible? And I've talked about evil sacrifices before, but there is one passage in Exodus where the people were at the bottom of the mountain and they were dancing and they had built this golden calf while Moses was on the mountain in the presence of God. And they were dancing and participating in all this pagan reverie that was unpleasing to God. So let me go ahead and read it to you because it sounds like a lot of the concerts and festivals that go on today. Exodus chapter 32 verses 5 through 8. Aaron saw how excited the people were, so he built an altar in front of the calf. Then he announced, tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. The people got up early the next morning to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings. After this, they celebrated with feasting and drinking, and they indulged in pagan revelry. They, the Lord told Moses, quick, go down the mountain. Your people whom you brought from the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. How quickly they have turned away from the way I commanded them to live. They have melted down gold and made a calf and they have bowed down and sacrificed to it. They are saying, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Aaron saw how excited. He saw how excited the people were. And just as Aaron saw how excited the, the people became over a false idol, so does Satan. I am not comparing Aaron to Satan. I am not saying that Aaron was Satan. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I'm saying is Satan, he watches, he sees how excited people get over secular music. He sees how excited people get over certain celebrities. He sees how excited people get over certain festivals where even these festivals and these concerts, they build these images that are displeasing to God, that are mocking to God, that, dis, that are dishonorable before God. Satan sees how one's mood changes when, when one of his artists sing a certain song. He sees the goosebumps that come on your flesh. This is why I always tell people, it doesn't matter if you have goosebumps or not. Is what being sung holy? Does it worship God? Is it pleasing? Is it acceptable to God? Satan sees how the mood of one changes. He sees the crowd jumping up and down, hollering and screaming. He sees his servants who get excited over the fame and the money that comes with writing these songs that are so evil. He sees the followers. He sees how some of his servants, those who worship Satan, those who are unashamed to say that, Hey, you know what? I know the music that I write, the, you know, the music that I sing, it's, it's not holy. It's, it's, it can actually be dark, but I love the money. I love the fame. I love the followers that come on social media. Satan sees that and he gets them in this trap of thinking, if you keep on doing this, I'll send more money your way. I'll send more fame your way. You can live your best life now or for you to live for these celebrities, for these artists, for these individuals who support them, who encourage them, who go to these festivals, all for them to be in eternal torment. Satan's service, they choose to write and sing music that pleases the ear of man rather than music that glorifies the one and only living God. They choose to write and sing music that pleases the ear of man rather than music that glorifies the one and only living God. You got to pay close attention to the lyrics. You got to pay close attention to the words that are being said. Don't be caught off. Don't be 
deceived by the beat. Don't be deceived by the beat. The beat can be deceiving. The beat can make it feel like or sound like the song is okay. A lot of times people will start reciting lyrics because the beat sounds so good with it. But ladies and gentlemen, if you don't pay close attention to what you're saying, you know, the Bible talks about how every idle word we've spoken will be judged. Every idle word. Do you think that excludes the, lit, the, the words that you recite from some of these songs? Every idle word that is spoken will be judged. What are you singing? Who are you worshiping? Now, when you see the word festival here in Exodus, remember it said, Aaron said, tomorrow will be a festival to the Lord. Festival here translates into a sacrifice. A sacrifice. Notice here, it also says the people got up early the next morning. They sacrificed their sleep. They sacrificed their sleep out of excitement and devotion to the false idols, to the golden calf that had been built. They were excited to get up and worship this false idol and they thought that doing so that they were going to be doing so unto the Lord their God. But no, 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 no. God had already told the people, you are not to build other false idols. You are not to worship other gods. You are not to carve images of other gods. And what did they do? They did the exact opposite. Your sacrifice, people only sacrifice their time, they sacrifice their money, they sacrifice for sleep. They sacrifice their sleep for the things of people that are important to them. I'm going to say it again. You only sacrifice your time, your sleep, and your money for the things and or people that are important to you. So this summer, so many people are going to be going to these concerts and these festivals. It, it begins even in the spring, but I know summer is when it goes heavy. Summer is when a lot of tours start to really take off. A lot of people sacrifice their time. They spend hours and hours driving to this destination. They sacrifice their sleep when, they're when they may usually be in bed by 10 or 11 o'clock. Instead, they are now jumping up and down at this concert. Then they got to drive home all excited, still on this high. They sacrifice their money. They spend hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of dollars for a celebrity who does not care about them, for a celebrity who has written who has written lyrics for the kingdom of darkness. And so many people get caught in this trap that, Cameron, I already spent thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm not gonna waste my money. I, I can't get a refund. Who do, what, what do I look like spending all that money and not going to that concert? But what is it worth you going to that concert? And you don't know if you're gonna make it home. Tomorrow is never promised. The next hour is not promised. I want, I want you to think about the Travis Scott concert. There were what, 10 or 11 people that lost their lives that day. 10 or 11 people, including a young boy, I believe, who lost their lives that day. Now, I'm not saying that they ended up in hell. I don't know where they ended up. But what business did a Christian, what business did a believer, what business did a follower of Christ have being at that concert, being at that festival? Why would you want to go to go to such a thing? Why would you want to be present in such an atmosphere? Do you remember, ladies and gentlemen, what some of the witnesses said, how hard it became, how hard it was to breathe, how the atmosphere felt, felt very dark, how they could tell there was it was almost like a sacrifice. The stage was being set to sacrifice. God was allowing these things to be seen. God was allowing these things to be exposed for a reason. And today, people still choose to go to such festivals. People still choose to go to such things. They spend their money. They waste their time. They lose sleep. 
over evil performances. What festival are you going to this year? What concert are you going to? That you as a follower of Christ know you should not be attending. Where you know you should not be present. I don't care if your friends laugh at you. I don't care if your family laughs at you. I don't care if your coworkers say you're crazy. It's not that serious. It is that serious. This is your soul we're dealing with. This is your soul that I'm talking about. What business do you have being present at such an evil event? They indulged in pagan revelry. The people mocked God. That's all that means. The people mocked God. Ladies and gentlemen, have you not seen what happens when celebrities mock God, when nations mock God, when movies mock God? Look at what Brazil did. Brazil just had this, this big old festival where they were mocking Jesus. They were, they were celebrating the kingdom of darkness. And not even two days later, Brazil was flooded. Not even two days later, Brazil was under judgment. How long do you think the United States will stand in the midst of mocking God? How long do you think the United States, God will allow the United States to continue mocking him? Oh, the, the clock is ticking. Time is short. Time is running out. And I hope, because we don't know, nobody knows the day nor the hour when the trumpet will blast. But I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that when Jesus comes to rapture up his church, to gather up his followers, I hope that you're not in the midst of sin. I hope that you're not caught at an evil event. I hope that you're not caught participating in paganistic revelry. I hope you're not caught. I would rather you be praying. I would rather you be spending time with friends or family. Doing something else that God will, would very well find acceptable. That God will say, that's okay. Instead of at this concert where the artist is screaming. Throw the middle finger up to the sky. Where the artist is, where the artist is screaming. You all are going to hell today. Where the artist is screaming evil things that I really can't repeat. What business do you have being at such a concert where spells are being spoken, where God is being rejected? What business do you have being there in the presence of people who mock God? So many believers argue about forsaking brethren. They won't even attend to, to gather with other believers, but they don't mind gathering with those who mock God. Gathering, gathering with those who can care less about God and his ways. Would Jesus be pleased with you attending that concert? If Jesus were riding in the car with you, would he go to that concert with you? If he said, no, I don't want to go there. Let, let's go elsewhere. I don't believe we should go here. Would you still go? Have you prayed? Have you asked God, Lord, do you want me to go here? And if he says, yes, it's not for you to be dancing. It's not for you to be twerking. It's not for you to be reciting those lyrics. It's for you to be ministering the gospel. Would God find it pleasing for you, for you to go to these concerts and these festivals. How quickly they have turned away from the way I commanded them to live. How quickly they have turned away from the way I have commanded them to live. This reminds me of a song that so many people were talking about last year called Church Girl. And I won't name the artist. You probably already know who sings it. But this artist was encouraging young women to twerk, 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 twerk in the club on Saturday night. Get drunk, get high, have sex Saturday night and go to church Sunday morning. Let loose on Saturday night just to go to church Sunday morning. How quickly 
one turns away from living holy. God's word doesn't say just because it's Saturday night, you can go crazy. You can be wild. You can do all this wild and wild partying. God's word speaks against wild partying. Paul actually has in the list, those who will be in hell are those who partake in wild parties. Going to the club, twer twerking, getting drunk and having sex on Saturday night. And then waking up for church Sunday morning is not pleasing to God. Those who live this kind of lifestyle are lukewarm. And re remember in Revelation chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus, Jesus said, But since you are like lukewarm water, like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Jesus will spit you out of his mouth if you are lukewarm. If you're sitting here backing it up on someone who you shouldn't be backing it up on. If you're sitting here getting drunk, getting high. Throwing up your middle finger to the sky. Acting wild, doing things you shouldn't be doing on a Saturday night. And then thinking it's okay for you to come to church Sunday morning. You're lukewarm. You're just playing an act before God. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what's in your heart. And I know God isn't primary. God isn't. Your source, God, your relationship with God isn't as serious. If you're sitting in the club Saturday night, if you're at a wild party Saturday night, and I've been there, I've done that. And I'm giving this word because I don't want you to do that. I know what it's like actually to even go to church and then go to a party afterwards. I know what it's like to go to a party one night and into church the next morning. I was in a season where even myself, I was lukewarm. But by the grace of God, he brought me back. He kept his hand on me. He said, I'm going to let you venture off too far. Mm -mm, you're going to come back. I got a purpose for you. I have a plan for you. And I'm giving this word today because I care so deeply about your soul. I don't want you to get caught up in that lifestyle. I don't want you to get caught up in the evil things of this world. Ladies and gentlemen, be on fire for Jesus. Be on fire for Jesus. John chapter 4 verse 24 says, For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And I love this scripture because it doesn't say you must worship him on Sunday in spirit and truth. It doesn't say you must worship him on Wednesday in spirit and truth. It doesn't even say you must worship him on Saturday in spirit and truth. Thinking that the other days of the week, you can just worship and sing and do whatever you want. No, it says we must worship him in spirit and truth. This is a daily worship, a daily worship, a daily worship. We are to worship God every day in spirit and in truth. Those who worship him. The biblical meaning of worship means to kiss the hands to or towards one in token of rep reference. You know, it's also another form of kneeling or bowing down. So when you worship someone, you know, and here the biblical meaning, you know, you kiss their hand, you kneel, you bow down. But what does that look like today? People jumping up and down to a celebrity people wanting to touch the hands of a celebrity when they're screaming when they're saying touch me touch me touch me oh i just want to kiss your hand oh i just want to kiss you oh i just want to be touched by you that is worship they're worshiping an idol they've made that celebrity their idol and i know this is not a popular word i know that this is a word where many will turn turn from but that's because this is the truth and many people don't want to hear the truth it's not even because it's me, it's because it's the word of God. We are to worship God because he is spirit. We are to worship him in spirit and truth. But just as he is spirit, you know, there's evil spirits. There's a kingdom of darkness. There are demonic beings that we cannot see. So if you're not worshiping God, who do you think you're worshiping? When you're at these concerts, when you're at these festivals, maybe you may be in a studio. Who are you worshiping? Who are you praising? 
What beings are touching your hands? What beings are influencing your mind? Just as one can worship God, they can also worship demons. Many may be unaware or aware and just don't care. But the worship of demons is common, more common than many would like to think. Because nobody in their right mind would actually acknowledge worshiping a demon. Nobody in their right mind would actually say, you know what? I actually was praising the kingdom of darkness. I actually was praising the way that Satan wants us to live. No, that's not popular to say. And Satan doesn't even want that to be said because he knows it will turn many people away. But I'll say it again when you listen to the lyrics, when you hear the words of the song, when you just read the words of the song without the rhythm or the beat that's behind it. You'll see that those words are not pleasing. Those words actually can be spells. They can be demonic chants. Unholy. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do it all. I've said it before. Do everything. Everything you do, it should be done for the glory of God. If you're doing it for anything or anyone else, even if it's a good deed and it's not for the glory of God, it's not pleasing to him because everything we should do should be done to give God the glory it should be to give him the honor and the praise. Whatever you do, whatever you drink, whatever you eat, whatever you sing, whatever you listen to, whatever, wherever you go, do it all for the glory of God. I like what David Guzik said. He said, the purpose of our lives isn't to see how much we can get away with and still be Christians. Rather, it is to glorify God. <laughs> The purpose of our lives isn't to see how much we can get away with and still be Christians because that is the lifestyle of so many Christians today. How much can I get away with? How much can I do that I know I probably shouldn't be doing and still make it into heaven? But the Bible says the road is narrow. Jesus said the road, the entryway into heaven, it is a narrow opening. It's narrow. It's so, so, so hard to get in. But guess what? Going into hell? Oh, that's easy. Jesus says that's a highway. Getting into hell is easy. Do whatever you want. Live however you want. See if you can get away with certain things with God and he not be angry, him not be angry at you. And I hope you don't die in the midst of it because going into hell, getting into hell, that's easy. Getting into heaven, that's hard. That take, Yeah, that's hard. That's hard. The way we live, narrow. The things we're allowed to do compared to what the world wants to do, narrow. We are to live holy lives. You shouldn't be living to see how much you can get away with. At that point, you're being sneaky. You're lukewarm. It tells me you really don't fear God, which means you're living as, as a fool. And you may be living as a fool because what did I say at the beginning? You're listening to songs of fools. Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. And whatever you do or say, do it as a representative of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. You know, it's funny. You won't find an AT&T representative uh, at a, at a T-Mobile store. You won't find that. You won't find, you won't find a, a representative of, of Nike wearing adidas i wonder why is that just as you wouldn't find a representative of t-mobile at an at a at&t store or a representative of nike wearing adidas clothing as a representative of christ, as a representative of christ we shouldn't be doing the same things that the world does who do you represent because you cannot go to some of these concerts 
You cannot go to some of these festivals and say, oh, I'm a representative of Christ. I'm a representative of Christ, but I'm cursing. I'm a representative of Christ, but I'm twerking. I'm a representative of Christ, but I'm getting high. I'm getting drunk. I'm smoking weed. I'm doing these other drugs. I'm a representative of 